It's time to stock your fire pits and get that snow gear out because winter is about to finally make its way into the Great Lakes region. In this video, I'm going to talk about what to expect at the beginning of 2024 and as we get into the following week, the Arctic air potential that is making its way in as well as the potential for a couple winter snow makers that we could possibly see. Hello everybody, the time is 12.30 p.m. and it is 123123 New Year's Eve 2023 and 2024 is just around the corner. Happy New Year to everybody. Hopefully everybody is doing well today and I'm here to tell you that if you have been waiting for winter, it's on its way and it looks like it's going to come in with a bit of a punch um, according to what some of the models have been projecting. Now we're going to look at some long range models and in this video today so make sure to keep in mind that this is not an exact replication of what is probably going to occur okay there's gonna be a lot of changes as we get to this point but again uh, there's still some hints between all different models where we can project yeah there's probably gonna be something going on with this setup that we have for some winter weather so we're gonna get right into it right now so let's dive right in uh, first of all with the um, projection from the Climate Prediction Center and you do notice that there is a they've highlighted a risk for heavy snow across a portion of the Great Lakes region now keep in mind this risk that they have put out is only for like 20 percent okay 20 percent chance of heavy snow in this region okay but you can still see that it covers all of Michigan much of Indiana and Ohio now there's still some questions as to where the upcoming system that will likely contribute to the snowfall is going to set up okay models have started to become a bit more consistent on the fact that hey there is going to be a wintry system that makes its way into the region um, near the end of next week at the start of 2024 the question is how much snow is there going to be and how intense is it going to be and there's still several questions with that and there this is all contributed by a pattern change that we are seeing um, in many different portions of the atmosphere which we'll get to in just a second first of all let's go to the climate prediction center's graphic um, between January 7th and 13th they're still showing above average temperatures but you notice there is a bit of a trend a difference here it's showing that there is a lot less chance for an above average setup okay we've noticed that there's been a big red bubble pretty much over the Great Lakes region for quite a few weeks now this pattern change that we're starting to see in the atmosphere is going to contribute to the likelihood of temperatures starting to cool down a little bit and I think they're probably cool down significantly at some points over the span of the next couple of weeks okay because we do have some Arctic air that's likely going to be coming in okay the polar vortex may actually make its way into the Great Lakes region over the next couple of weeks for a couple days but again the question is when and how much snow is going to come in with that that's kind of really what we're getting down to so um, again let's take a look at some things that are causing this so you notice that this is the um, NAO index now you probably see this and you wonder what on earth does that mean well the North Atlantic Oscillation that's what this represents here okay so North Atlantic Oscillation is pretty much a um, pressure gradient uh, between two pressure systems in over the northern Atlantic okay so again North Atlantic Oscillation and in a positive phase what you typically see is you see a stronger pull of air from the southwest across the United States over the North Atlantic okay and that's starting to weaken why would that be important well the fact that it's weakening again um, you have that pull of warm air over the United States as that weakens you're gonna start to see the potential for Arctic air to start to make its way farther down into uh, parts of the United States including the Great Lakes region okay that strong pull of air into that high pressure gradient during the positive phase of the NAO which we've been in throughout much of January okay that's gonna start to go down and not gonna be able to pull that warm air up into the United States out towards the North Atlantic so that Arctic air is gonna have a chance to finally take some grip especially since um, the latest models are projecting that the oscillation is going to go down in a pretty negative into a pretty negative phase around a value of negative one okay negative one index that's not terribly strong but again still enough to contribute to cooler temperature potential over the Great Lakes region. And I think over the next few months we'll start to see this kind of thing continue because again um, the National Weather Service is also putting or the CPC is putting out the idea that the strong El Nino pattern that we've been having over the next past couple of uh, months as well is going to start to weaken as we get into springtime okay and as that begins to gradually weaken that will also contribute to changes in our weather patterns that are currently ongoing because again as the El Nino weakens what we see is a strengthening of the polar jet and a weakening of the subtropical jet so that's going to start to show up in possibly a few of our weather setups over the next few months as well so there's a transitioning point going on in the atmosphere and that's going to contribute to more active weather patterns now let's look at exactly how this is going to play out 
in the weather models. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly. So what this is showing is temperatures in the upper levels of the, or not temperatures, but the pressure gradient in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And you do notice North Atlantic oscillation, tight pressure gradient. You can see that right here. There's that tight pressure gradient present in the North Atlantic at the current moment. What you're going to see here is that's going to start to weaken. Okay, those isobars that are really tight with each other, that's going to start to weaken a little bit, and, that, and then you'll start to see kind of how that changes things with regards to uh, the pressure in the upper levels. Again, red associated with higher pressure aloft, which is associated with rising air at the ground, low pressure at the ground, and then low pressure aloft and high pressure at the surface with these troughs that you see the blue shaded here. So as we go into the beginning of the new year 2024 you can start to see uh, that pressure gradient still pretty tight in some spots but it's expected to sort of start to weaken a little bit and usually what happens when that does weaken is you see this tightening of of higher pressure aloft in this area and you're seeing that right there you kind of get a blocking setup a high pressure here high pressure on this side you get those two ridges that kind of build in on opposite sides in a negative north atlantic oscillation phase typically that's something that we can kind of notice you do see that you got some arctic air coming from the polar regions down into the united states you kind of got a you kind of got an access point for it down into the united states and this is going to really show up um, as we go into the first or the second week of january so you can see pretty much much of the continent of the united states is going to be under a deepening cold spike of air as that setup con uh, continues with the north atlantic oscillation and then also uh, just the changing air masses over the next couple of days as well but you can see uh, this trough really takes shape and it's a very tight pressure gradient over the united states which means it's probably going to be some wind chills with this some good decent wind chills with this but i do think temperatures are really going to take a sharp cool down as we get into january uh, 6th through 14th is kind of what i'm expecting for a quick spike of cold air and then you kind of see a ridge cut tends to build back into uh, the eastern United States again. But again, it, it does show up that another dive of cooler air is going to make its way into the United States. And again, this is long range, keep in mind. So there's still some things to be trimmed out with this setup. But you can see there's still there's definitely going to be some questions at play. But just keep this in mind that there's likely going to be some cooling air as we get into the middle of January. So let's look at the closer I guess the closer time frames and look a little bit closer up as well you see that there is a little bit of a system moving through the Great Lakes region today didn't really do a video on it because it's really not that impactful a little bit of freezing drizzle ongoing across parts of Wisconsin um, Michigan Indiana Ohio could see a bit of rain maybe some freezing drizzle and some snow but I don't think it's gonna be that impactful as it moves through progressing it forward though you can see again uh, really a similar pattern that we've been seeing over the next or the past few days and Again, we've had that dreary, foggy pattern. I think that's probably going to continue some cloudy, some cloudy skies, maybe break us to sun here and there. And I think it's going to continue into the, at least much of the first half of the of the first week of January. I think as we get into the second half, though, that's likely going to change. The models have become kind of more, uh, I guess, kind of more in agreement with regards to this system that is going to be developing as we get into next weekend so you can see that there's the potential for some snow with this on the northern side of the low and that low is likely going to possibly deepen as it progresses up into this area and that's looking to target again northern indiana northern ohio parts of michigan now the euro does not agree with this assessment and it actually displaces the low farther to the south so that's something that is still at question with the setup is where that low is going to be positioned over the continental United States. Now, interesting thing to note here is that this low has has been relatively consistent as we get even into the longer range. I think this low is going to have a lot to do with where that first initial low does set up um, over the eastern United States, but it does show another system of snow potentially coming over parts of Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio with some rain on the southern side. So. You can see that there is a pattern change, and then look right here. This is what I was talking about, that Arctic air possibly moving in as we get into uh, the middle of January. You can see uh, that trough really takes shape, dips, di nose dives down into the Great Lakes region, also with some possible lake effect snow associated with that. Temperatures as we get into the evening hours on Thursday are going to be in the teens, which is, again, pretty cold. And then as we wake up 
the morning Thursday, January 11th, the long range models are projecting that temperatures will be as cold as three degrees. So you can see that cold temperature is starting to show up in the models, but again, it's probably going to change as we get closer to that point. There's still a lot to be trimmed out. And then again, long range models can't always take at face value. So, but I do believe that there is going to be a cold spike as we get into mid January with the likelihood of some decent snowfall. Euro, again, we'll show you that as well. We'll back it up and show you exactly what it's projecting. And again, there's that low that the model was projecting uh, previously. Uh, it does show that that low is going to be displaced far to the south and places that are showing heavy snow in the GFS will not see as much snow um, as the GFS is saying. So, and again, it, it kind of shows that nor'easter pattern as it gets into parts of the eastern Atlantic. That could be pretty interesting if it if that does evolve the way it way it says it's going to. And then there's that secondary low that's again going to welcome that Arctic air in to the Great Lakes region. That's something to be watching out for. But it does show still that snow potential for Michigan. Um, it doesn't really show up for Indiana and Ohio until we get into the latter portions of it when that continues to lift off to the northeast. But again, it's that time of year we see those mid-latitude cyclones begin to develop and we start to see those winter storms begin to possibly start to take shape. So, and then you also have the Canadian model, which we'll look at as well. That kind of depicts the setup too. Again, that lobe displaces far to the south and actually displaces the snow much farther to the south too in parts of West Virginia, Kentucky, southern Ohio as well. As we show that and continue it forward, you can see that there is also potential for uh, that low again with that snow potential in Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. So all the models are really agreeing on two systems within the next two weeks that could be impactful and bring some snow. But the question is where and when that's really what it comes down to with this setup. So again, long range models, we cannot make a determination. Not even going to talk about snow totals just yet because we still have, uh, again, over 200 hours until these events start to really take shape. So uh, just keep that in mind as you see forecasts and just make sure to uh, read the data for your read the data for yourself but don't take it as a certainty so hopefully this video was helpful and informational provided some help with regards to forecasting this setup make sure to like the video and subscribe and stay updated with this setup um, if this does evolve to be more of a blizzard type situation that's gonna be a worst case scenario probably won't happen but if it does have to be the case I will definitely be ch be out chasing it um, my snow days are my, my chase days. So that's going to be a great time. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll try to keep you updated as this continues to evolve. I will see you all later.